They played in Wisconsin Dells and just the game field as they beat Oak Creek 74-54. Tyree Eady had 30 points. Storm Murphy had 27. They'll be the key players for Middleton again tonight. Both Division I recruits. Storm Murphy headed to Wofford and Tyree Eady to North Dakota State. The starting lineups for Middleton, it'll be Jack Smith, a 6'5 senior. Storm Murphy is a 5'11 senior. He wears number 10, Jack Smith, number 5. 21, Tyree Eady, 6'5 senior. 23, Myron Ashford Jr., 6'1 senior. And 32, C.J. Fermanick is a 6'0 senior guard. For Madison Memorial, they'll start with Billy Wilson, number 3, 6'0 senior at guard. Logan Connect is number 4, a 5'11 senior. Jake Ferguson, number 5, 6'6 senior. 12 is Matt Carapresso, a 6'7 senior, and Chris Knight, the man in the middle, a 6'8 senior, will wear number 22. Memorial wins the tip there in the white uniforms with the green trim, and Middleton in the road black with maroon and white trim. Logan Connect guarded by Storm Murphy right now. You know, I can't remember the last time, Jay, that I've seen a game where 10 seniors started. I think that's a... Uh, a, a rare happening. Billy Wilson's three misses. Carapresso on the rebound, but they're going to call a foul on Memorial on the inside. It's going to go on Chris Knight. So first personal of the game goes to the 6'8 senior, Chris Knight. That's one guy Memorial can't afford to have get in foul trouble. I think that's his size in, in the middle is an advantage that Memorial has. Well, that's going to go the other way as Knight takes the charge on Tyree Eady. That was close. That one could have gone either way. So that's the first on Tyree Eady. Last year, Chris Knight was Memorial's leading scorer at 17.3 points per game. And Tyree Eady was the leading scorer in the Big 8 Conference at 20.4 per game. And both of those players pick up Quick fouls here early in our first half. Beyond, 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 beyond. An electric crowd, both teams with enthusiastic student sections here tonight. I think you're going to see that Memorial is going to be a little bit more of a patient team as opposed to Middleton. I think Middleton's going to bring it down and, and launch it a little quicker than uh, Memorial will. Knight to Kara Presso for the first basket of the game. There's Storm Murphy doing what Storm Murphy does, driving aggressively to the basket, and oftentimes he'll draw the foul he did there on Billy Wilson. Storm Murphy to the free throw line for two shots. As we mentioned, he's headed to Wofford next year. First team all-conference. He was second in the Big 8 in scoring last year behind Tyree Eady. He led Middleton in assists with four and a half a game. Scored 18.4 a game. This Middleton, uh, Middleton team has big visions on their mind that this could be a special year with all the returning talent. I think Murphy's a real key to their season this year, Jay. If he can find his way to really involving his teammates in the game, they can be awfully good. Knight. Strong to the basket. It's going to be a two-shot foul as Myron Ashford didn't quite get the position. So Ashford gets the personal and Knight will go to See, the free think, throw line. I think he had position. I think he turned sideways. If he would have stayed square tonight, I think that they, they might have called that a charge. So here's Chris Knight. He's headed to Dartmouth next year and 0 for 1 at the free throw line tonight. He, of course, moved to Madison from DeForest, enrolled at Memorial. First team all-conference last year. Says his college choice came down to Dartmouth or Brown, so he chose Dartmouth. And he makes one of two to put Memorial back in front, 3-2. Didn't you have all those Ivy League school all, <laughs> schools all over you when you were I, coming out of high school? I, I had a team, their color was brown, but it wasn't Brown University, oh. I can tell you that. Oh, that's, maybe that's what I was thinking okay. about. There's Steve Collins, 19th season as the Spartans head coach, over 300 wins, also the boys volleyball coach at Madison Memorial High School. Three state championships, 2005, 2009, and 2011. You know, I was thinking about this. I think it happened one other time when we were doing these games. We may be the biggest homer pair 
of broadcasters in the history of basketball anywhere. We have we have one one of us has a son on the team, yeah, and the other one coached the team yeah. for about 20 years. You blew our cover. Being uh, being Middleton, so oh, we can get over that though. <laughs> Maybe you can. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Ferguson, two of two, five to the Memorial lead. We played almost two minutes. Murphy fading on the side. Boy, that's a nice looking shot. Little step back jump shot. That's you do that right. That's impossible to defend Storm. unless you're about seven foot tall. Storm Murphy has all four Middleton points. He had 18 of his 27 against Oak Creek in the first half on Saturday. Billy Wilson didn't take the three as Jack Smith came out to defend for the Cardinals. Memorial's done a good job against uh, Middleton's full court pressure. They've made the wise pass. They haven't had issues with turnovers yet. There's Knight working against Smith now. Wilson looks for some help and finds it on the wing with Kara Presso. Wilson driving, floater lane short. Kara Presso follows for two. He's got four, seven, four Memorial. Memorial, I think, is a very good off offensive rebounding team. And that's going to be something that Middleton's going to have to deal with. Edie dishing to Smith. Nice Pumps, pass. Missed the shot. Rebound tonight. That's going to be another foul on Ashford as he came over the top and fouled Knight on the rebound. Well, you need to finish those. You can't, can't get yourself much closer to the basket than that. Number 11 is Joseph Harper, a 5'9 senior from Madison Memorial. Ben Jackson, 33 from Middleton. He's a 6'5 sen uh, senior. Also, tw 22, Davis Rocky is in. He is a 6'3 forward. I want to say hi to Davis Rocky's uncles watching in Des Moines and Sun Prairie tonight. And grandma's watching us near Cedar Rapids. So good to have the whole Rocky clan online with us tonight. The Iowa connection there. Yeah. Here's Wilson across the timeline. Carol Presso. He's checked by Rocky. Knight lost it. Murphy picks it up for Middleton. You want to be careful putting it in the, on the floor when there's two or three guys around you like that. Rocky for three. From Halfway the quarter. down. Jackson tried the follow tip. Nothing there. And Carol Presso clears for the Spartan. Carol Presso drops it in for Knight. That's a tough matchup. He scores. Knight has three. Memorial's lead is five. I think Middleton's going to have to challenge Carol Presso out a little further. That's too easy a pass to throw it into the, the big guy in the middle. Hey, what? Memorial doesn't look too jittery for the first three now, well, minutes of the season. Huh? Well, you know, these are the five experienced players out here. Yep. Edie missed the bunny. Wow. Now that's two, two missed layups on two consecutive possessions that's uh that's gonna catch up with uh, him. Knight was too deep but he couldn't make the shot no foul here comes Murphy the other way driving he got hammered he'll shoot two Logan connects first personal foul well you know he manages to find his way to the free throw line you want to you want to tell him to get under a little bit more control but if uh, Memorial's going to attack him like that that's what Murphy does. Boy, He'll do it all night. He's not afraid. He sticks nope. his nose in there. <laughs> he goes right for the rim. Missed his first free throw attempt. 33 for Memorial. Ian Brown, 6'4", sophomore in. I know it's early in the season, but uh, my guess is before the, the year's over with, Murphy will be one of the better free throw shooters in the mm -hmm. area. One of two for the senior guard from Middleton. Five points for Murphy. 9-5, Memorial with the lead. Number 15 for Middleton is Allen Roden. He's a 5'11 junior. Now here's Brown looking for some help at the timeline. Look out, Ferguson tried to save it, but he was on the sideline, oh. so it'll go back to Middleton. Brown made a sophomore play there. He got the ball right on the half court line against the pressure, and you, that's one place you don't want to be with it. That it's playing right in, playing right into Middleton's hands. But he's a sophomore, he'll learn. There's Kevin Babry, his 
11th season at Middleton after taking over for one John Boyle. Boy, that's a long time ago. Isn't that some? Whoa, that's a long, long one. Long three by Ben Jackson misses, and Joseph Harper rebounds for the Spartans. Jackson can hit the three, but not that time. He was out there a little ways uh -huh. on that one. Look at Jake Ferguson with a strong move, missed the layup. Rocky clears for Middleton, gets it in the hands of Murphy. We've had two missed layups by each team now. Furman Ick gets the roll. That's a nice shot. Nice soft floater. That's a tough shot to make. So Middle Go ahead, I'm sorry. Middleton gets a point from someone other than other than the name Storm Murphy. And it's 9-7. Kara Presso for Brown. Layup, good. I think a big key to Memorial season this year, Jay, will be these, you know, they have five seniors that started last year, but to see how these younger kids and the kids that haven't played much before, how they come along, you know, that with Brown there in particular, made that last basket as a sophomore, because it looks like if he develops, he could really help them. Murphy looks away, gets the layup, it rolls out, and then fouls Kara Presso on the rebound. Seems to be that Memorial is really dominating the glass on on both ends, you know, and that's no surprise, I guess. That's their strength, and perhaps that's a, a weakness of Middleton. So uh, they've gotten a lot of mileage out of it so far. Another new face for Middleton is number three, Parker Sigmund, a 6'4 senior. They call him Skip because in youth basketball, he skipped up from, like, the D team to the A team. <laughs> He oh. jumped a bunch of levels, so they call him Skip. So they call him Skip, okay. Ferguson got a bump and then traveled. Jake Ferguson, of course, his brother Joe, plays for the Badger football team, grandson of Barry Alvarez, and Jake will be headed to Wisconsin to play football next year as well. A little 1-3-1 one, one zone by Memorial. Let's see if Middleton recognizes it and shows a little patience here. To little Edie. Bit. Tried a long one, fell to the floor, and now out of bounds. It'll stay as uh, one of the Memorial players had his foot on the end line. When a team changes defenses like that, the, particularly the first time they're in a defense, I'd like to see a team, you know, work the ball a bit, find out what their slides are going to be, where the openings are, you know, to take a quick, quick shot like that really plays into the hands of the defense because you just don't know what they're going to do with it. 11-7 Memorial. Murphy checked by Joseph Harper. Gets a pick from Jack Smith. Now Jake Ferguson will try to handle Murphy. Driving and scoring with a left hand. Murphy's got seven. If you let a good player into the paint like that, he's going to eat you up. And they haven't been able to keep Murphy out of the paint yet. Ferguson, a beautiful finger roll in the lane. He's got four. That's uh, with all the three-point shooting that's going on now, games are still won, won and lost in the paint. And Ferguson had a real nice uh, nice drive that time. I see Ferguson playing, uh, playing Edie. He's right in his face out there. Knight denies Allen Roden. Nice pass. Ooh, and on the line. On the line, it goes to Middleton. Well, Murphy draws such a crowd, you know, guys, guys will be open. But if you got six, eight, Chris Knight coming at you, well, yeah. that's going to be a tough shot. And you know, I think the book on Murphy is too. When he gets in there like that, his first idea is not to pass the ball. So if, if you uh, squash down on him with more than one guy, you're going to put him in a little bit of a bind. Memorial has not done that yet. Driving is Harper, missed it. Knight battles for the rebound, and the foul's gonna go against Jack Smith for Middleton. I think Memorial's size is always, already starting to show up a little, a little bit here. That's the first on Smith. Six team fouls against Middleton already, so after this, the rest of the first half, Memorial will be in the bonus. Only three fouls so far on the Spartans. Off the inbound, here's Connect inside, it rolls out. 
Ben Jackson with a strong rebound for the Cardinals. Good rebound by Connect. Middleton can't let, you know, they're having enough trouble with the big guys. They can't let the little guys start get, getting rebounds like that. Billy Wilson won't let Edie get the move to the basket. Now they'll reset with Murphy outside the arc. Connect hanging in there. Jackson with a high arching three that misses. And Wilson clears it for Memorial. I guess he likes that spot out there. Stolen by Furmanick to Murphy. Another left-handed layup for Murphy, who's got nine. Thirteen eleven. I don't think anybody's going to run away and hide tonight, are they? No, I don't think so. <laughs> You've got two pretty tough teams here. In the state ranking, Stevens Point is number one, Kakana number two, Middleton four, Madison Memorial five. A couple of other big eight schools are in the top ten as well. Madison East nine and Janesville Craig ten. There's a block by Middleton. They send Edie running the other way, and he fumbled it out of bounds. Turnover. Well, they had the advantage there. That was a nice block. I didn't see who got that, uh, who got the block. Back comes Jake Ferguson. They finally inbound to Knight, who gets it in the hands of Logan Connect. Wilson and Connect, the guard tandem for Madison Memorial. Connect's a good golfer for the Spartans. Now here's Ferguson. Denied once, stays with it, gets it back, and it's tipped out of bounds. It'll be Memorial's basketball. Here's Jake Ferguson. He makes some nice athletic plays. He's uh, he's tough to handle around the around the basket. Well, we saw him dominate one of our games last year. You know, I they're a little underrated, but I like Memorial's pair of guards, Wilson and Connect. You know, they're not very flashy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not going to score a lot of points against anybody. But what I like about them, particularly against a team that pressures like Middleton does, they don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They're pretty solid that way. And if they they can just take care of business with the ball and get it to the bigger guys, that's going to be real important for Memorial. Just went to the scoring table to make sure the possession arrow was correct, and it is. It's pointing Middleton's way right now. So eight and a half minutes left, first half. 13-11 Memorial. Here's Knight. Ferguson into the post. Kara Presso reverses and scores. Kara Presso's sneaky around the basket. Mm -hmm. he, his body gets going about two or three different directions, and he's tough to guard. He's got six points. Memorial is really going after Edie. We haven't mentioned his name much tonight. They, whoever they had was Ferguson before. Now it's connect. They're right in his face. They're not giving him any room. Jackson, well, that three went in, but it hit the basket Wire. support up top. So it's out of bounds to Memorial, so no, no basket there. Jackson's 0 for 3 from 3. That's what happened here. Once it hits that support above the basket, and when you've got the dead. two of the top scorers in the conference there, I'm not, I'm not so sure I want to see us taking that, uh, that shot. He's missed three of those now. Allen Roden ready to come in for Middleton when play is stopped. Right now, clock running. Now there's 7.20 left. There's a miss that Murphy comes away with. And here comes Middleton, down four. Nice pass. And Ooh. Jackson converts. Yeah, he just needed to get a little closer to the basket, yep. I guess. He's much better at that. Yep. And that's where Murphy can be so dangerous when he distributes. When he's looking to pass the ball, there's no way to guard him. You can't play him. He's too, he's too good. But when he's dribbling 17 times and then taking a shot, he's kind of helping the other teams. 15-13. Oh, they nice left pass. Ferguson alone. That was a great feed from Connect. Yeah, that's a, that Connect and Wilson. I, 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 I like the way those mm -hmm. guys play. They're solid. They make the, make the wise decisions. They don't make too many mistakes 
Yeah. They're not, they're not Sharif Smith, the great guard from Memorial a couple years ago. There's a miss by Fermanick, and it, it falls into the hands of Kara Presso. And we don't have stats here, Jay, but I'd love to see what the rebound totals are right now. I, I'm, I'm thinking that Middleton's probably, or uh, Memorial's probably got a two to one edge on the rebounding, at least mm -hmm. a two to one edge. Knight, air ball. Kara Presso got the rebound, no. Now here's Wilson driving. Ooh, tough left-handed shot. Kara Presso is battling again, and he's fouled again. That's the advantage Memorial has there. On the glass. They can afford to just throw it up and go after it. And we're going to have a timeout. The foul was on Ben Jackson. That's his first. And when play resumes after the timeout, we're going to have Memorial shooting free throws. You know, if I'm Memorial now, if I'm Coach Collins, I tell them to pretty much keep up what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. If uh, if I'm uh, if I'm Middleton, mm -hmm. I think I'm telling the boys to, to start getting Edie a little bit more involved in what's going on. Now, I know their mm -hmm. Memorial's defending them very hard, but they, they mm -hmm. have to have something they can do to get him open because they're going to have to deal with that all year long. Mm -hmm. And this is, that was the story in their opener against Oak Creek on Saturday where Edie had only eight points in the first half but then exploded for 22 in the second half. You know the Madison Memorial has won or shared the Big 8 Conference title 13 straight years? Wow. That's pretty impressive. Well, last year was pretty tight. They only got it at the end. There's another offensive rebound on Knight. That one's though tied up as Rocky. Knight got that ball. The ball. He, he wants to, you should keep that up above your head. They won't tie up if you do that. He brought it down to his waist and that's when the, the little dudes tie up. <laughs> All right, six minutes left, first half. Okay, we got Memorial Zone again here. So I think the second time they've shown it tonight. There's Edie. Oh, tough luck on the roll and the uh, rebound that, to Brown. That's a good possession though yeah. for Middleton. That's the kind of thing they want to get a, get at. There's Wilson. Brown in the corner. Knight. Defended by C.J. Fermanick in the post, and they're going to say Knight did a little too much, and that's going to be the second foul on Chris Knight, offensive. That's get, getting a little physical in there. Well, Fermanick lost, loses that size advantage, but I tell you what, he is he is one great well, athlete. He, we saw him a lot in the football season. He did everything. He, yeah, he battled quarterback. Was, you know, punted, punt returns, defensive yep. back, did it all. And they're asking him to play a 6'8 guy. You Edie. know he's got something going for him. Kara Presso rejected Edie. Rocky, though, hits the three. So Davis Rocky gets Middleton within one. Ferguson, great luck to Kara Presso. He's right. got eight. Nice passing by Memorial. Murphy the other way. Nope. Roden rebounds. Here's three from Rocky again. They're See, loving now, it in Cedar Rapids. At, at some point, a basketball player figures out that the best three-point shot to get is the one that comes on a pass from inside to out. You know, the Badgers figured that out the other night against no. Syracuse. And uh, that's what Mom uh, Middleton's done the last two possessions. Sweet move by Joseph Harper to put Memorial back in front. Brett Whipley and Jack Smith ready to come in for Middleton. Blocked! That was Harper denying Murphy. They're gonna, they're gonna, Memorial starting to get a feel for how to play him a little bit. And he's going he's gonna to have to start giving up the ball. See, you know, he had two guys on him. He had open teammates. So Smith and Whipley in. Edie for three. Nope. Rebound tracked in the corner by Jack Smith. 
Tell you what, Harper has given Storm Murphy the business defensively, and Murphy's going to do a little showtime, it looks like. Furmanek for three. Nope. Ooh, that had missed badly. Boy. And it's going to go out of play to Memorial. I think he's normally a pretty good shooter. That was uh, must have been a breeze. A crosswind <laughs> came <laughs> yeah. through about the time he shot. I see a door open. Yeah, that, that was unusual for Furmanek. All right, Memorial. Well, this has been just what we thought it would be. Wilson's three nearly banked in, but yeah. didn't an ED rebound. I'm not sure that's his shot. People love that three, don't they? They sure do. Mm. What do we have? The Badgers a couple games ago shoot 39 in one game. Right. Every year it seems like they're shooting it more and more. ED got it and a foul. Yes. Billy Wilson's second personal. Edie's first basket, and he'll try for the three-point play. He's a good player. You gotta, yeah. you gotta use him more. He's. Uh, I don't know that Memorial has anybody that can play him. Once he gets the ball, they're doing a pretty good job guarding him before he gets the ball. That's one of the reasons we haven't seen him with it too much. But once he has his hands on it, he's awful tough to deal with. Three-point play for Edie, his first points tonight, and Middleton out front for the first time in a while. Murphy got an arm, and that's going to be a foul on number 10, his second. That's a good place to trap, though. They had him right here in the corner, so they had a, you know, he was quadruple team because you had the, the half-court line and the sideline helping you out. They got bailed out by the foul. So here's Joseph Harper at the free-throw line. He is a 5'9", senior guard. Has a basket tonight. And this is a one and one. He'll get another. We've got Cora Presso and Brett Whipley in there going after it here. <laughs> Dog fight in there. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Harper's second. High arching shot is good. So two for two for Harper, who has four points. And we're going to have a substitution as Storm Murphy returns for Middleton. He'll get Davis Rocky. Rocky hit those two big threes. So here we go. We're down to just over three minutes in the first half. So 1-3-1 one, one zone defense by Memorial, this possession. This defense usually opens some lanes. And uh, well, it was a little closer that time. Another missed three for Middleton and Kara Presso, who's had a big first half, gets that carom for Memorial. Spartans look to build in a one-point lead. Tipped away by Jack Smith. Loose ball. Whiffley kept it in play, but to Memorial. And that time, all right, Harper just put a shoulder down, and he hit Murphy right between the one and the zero on his Middleton uniform. That's going to be a foul on Harper, his first. Davis Rocky returns for Brett Whiffley. Okay, Memorial looks like they're going to stand there 1-3-1. One, so far this game they've just gone into it for a possession then popped out of it this will be their second time in a row in it if they do stay in it Middleton has not scored against it Murphy ooh, I think he thought about a long three there but I think he thought better of it well that was Jackson's spot he warmed <laughs> it up over there for him ooh. look inside for Edie and boy there was a lot of traffic there and yep. connect tipped it away That would have been a tough pass to make. Mm -hmm. Now that time Ferguson won it at the post. He had Murphy defending him on a great height advantage. Oh, tough shot by Harper. I don't even know Jeez. if he saw the basket. That was a little uh, unruly. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, unruly. I'm sure uh, <laughs> Coach Collins wasn't real yes. happy about that one. Murphy, long three. Nope. Connect. 
pulls the rebound away from Rocky. Now he's double teamed and gets it away to Harper. Carapresso to Brown. Ian Brown off the bench for four points. Yeah, sophomore look, look, looking good for yeah. his first game. 25-22. Yeah. See the Middleton's trying to figure out that zone. Yeah, it's a long three front of the rim. Yeah. Furmanick offensive rebound blocked once, but Smith follows. Carol Presso got the block, but Jack Smith was right there for his first basket. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing that that, uh, that zone that Memorial's playing now, it takes them a little bit out of rebound position. I, they've been dominating the boards mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's not a real good rebounding defense, and uh, it, show, it showed up on that possession. Storm Murphy leads all scorers with nine. Davis Rocky with six for Middleton. Matt Carapresso with eight. Jake Ferguson with five for Memorial. It would have been a great spot to use his left hand. I guess he guess he doesn't like to. <laughs> Here's the one three one again. Smith at the block. Now you can shoot over this anytime you want, but the the idea is to get inside like that. Smith overlays. Out of bounds. Smith knocked it out. That was a nice pass by Fermanick. And uh, should have finished that one. I think Memorial's going to stay in this zone for a while. Huh? It's been uh, they, pretty effective. It's been, uh, I think, four possessions now they've been in it. The last two, it hasn't been nearly as successful. Middleton got a couple offensive rebounds and then uh, and then a layup they missed the layup I guess so you can't call that real successful right you, yeah. but uh, they had the opportunity there's Wilson double team in the backcourt now some open space to Jake Ferguson number two is Chase Danielson he's in for Memorial 6-2 senior guard Final seconds of the half, that three misses. Loose ball to connect, he'll try a long three. It'll hit the backboard and that'll be the half. Well, the kind of competitive first half we expected. 25-24 Memorial. For a first game, that was a really, really a good first half. You know, it, it, it won't be as acceptable in the end of January, but for the beginning of December, I would take that half any day. Both teams, I thought, played uh, you know played fairly well. Middleton's putting good pressure on Memorial, full court pressure. I don't think Memorial's turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. Maybe not at all. I don't. Re I don't recall any. But of course, right. that doesn't mean much. Right. And and Middleton's, they're missing threes. I guess if those threes go in, that'll really help. Yep. But. Well, you have to, you have to yeah. wonder how much, how many times you go to the well with that three, too. Yeah, you know, they, that's kind of their M.O. is they live and die with the three-pointer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to see Edie get a little more involved, and I know a lot of that has to do with Memorial's defense, uh, which has been very good on him. They're, they're face guarding them, and they're chasing them around with different defenders, making it tough for them. But I, I think Middleton really needs to do what they can to get him involved because he's such an outstanding player. Storm Murphy leads all scorers with nine. Davis Rocky with six. And uh, Tyree Edie with three. Fermanick, Jackson, and Jack Smith with two each for Middleton for their 24. For Madison Memorial, Matt Carapresso with eight. Jake Ferguson with five. Ian Brown with four. Chris Knight with three. Joseph Harper, uh, he has four points for Memorial. They have 25, and they have a one-point lead at halftime. We're going to take a break, and we will be back with the start of the second half in just a few moments. You're watching the Prep Mania Game of the Week on Channel3000.com.
showtime. Welcome back to Madison Memorial High School. We're getting ready for the start of the second half of our Prep Manny Game of the Week on Channel3000.com. John Boyle, Jay Wilson with you. And it's been a great first half and looking forward to more excitement in the final 18 minutes. As you see, both teams return to the floor to warm up for the start of play when we resume. And uh, John, we, you were talking about adjustments at halftime. Who's got to make the adjustments and what might those adjustments be? You know, I, I think so far in this game, I think Memorial has played about as well as they're capable of playing at this point in the season. I don't think they have a lot of adjustments to make. I think Middleton can, ma can make some. <laughs> Tim, Tim Simon, the <laughs> JV coach came on. Want to know we wanted to interview him now, and the answer is no. But <laughs> continue with your observations. But I, I was just saying, I, I think Memorial's playing about as well as they can. I think Memorial, uh, Middleton can make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. The adjustments I'd like to see is uh, let's, let's get uh, the big three that they have, uh, Murphy, Kermanick, and um, Edie. Edie. Yeah. Let's get those three guys. Murphy's involved. Let's get Edie and Fermanick a little bit more involved because I, I think that uh, they have they have at this point they have a little bit too much for Memorial, but Middleton in the same sense has got to be mm -hmm. do something to keep Memorial from dominating the uh, the boards like they have been. Now I don't know does uh, Memorial have a three point shot. Have they made a three-point shot? I don't think they have a three-point shot. Yeah, you know, that's that's going to catch up with them through the course mm -hmm. of the season, I'm afraid. Uh, you know, they they have to do something to get a little bit better outside shooting yeah. because, you know, they have that front line, uh, Carapresso and, yeah. and Ferguson and Knight. Those, that's an awfully good high school yeah. front line. And if they could get some outside shooting from somewhere, it would make a huge difference for them. How about that? Steve Collins smiling at an official. Mike Carr, the Are you sure it was an official referee? and it wasn't yeah. his wife? No, they seem to be in, in fine spirits. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> the first time for everything. There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Start of the second half. Memorial with possession and a one-point lead. Okay, let's see if uh, Memorial tries to keep working it inside here, which is a smart thing to do for them. Nobody in real foul trouble yet. There's yep. a few players with two each. Yeah, there they go. That was a, a very, very good possession for Memorial. They they made seven or eight passes and they got it into their uh, their big dude in the middle and he's at the free throw line. C.J. Furman gets his second personal foul, so add him to the list of players with two fouls. And here comes Chris Knight to the free throw line. Makes that and three points in the first half. There's number four. Chris Knight's believed to be the first Wisconsin high school player to commit to Dartmouth since Mike Collins and Darren McCoo of Green Bay Permontre and Tom Hogan of Abbott Pennings all committed to the Green Wave in the 1980s. And Mr. Knight will go to Dartmouth as well. Murphy to Fermanick. I remember when Mike Collins, he played for us at East, went to uh, Dartmouth, and about two or three games into the se his first season, he had to guard a uh, young man named Michael Jordan. Oh, why? When Dartmouth played uh, North Carolina. Why would Dartmouth play North Carolina? I don't know, but they <laughs> did. How'd he do? Do you remember? Uh, North Carolina won. Oh, they did. Okay. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Doc Kramer's son, Casey, Kramer played, played, football, played at Dartmouth. football at Dartmouth and now he also played in the NFL did Casey Kramer and uh, now he's the chaplain for the Tennessee Titans which and, is one of the teams he played for and he was a pretty fair basketball player for us also that's right Murphy rolls out Knight rebounds Edie goes to the floor now he's trying to steal it from behind Knight all the way oh and he missed the layup wow Get it to a guard, maybe? Yeah, you know. You know <laughs> I mean, he almost went coast to coast on that one, but 999 times out of 1,000, it, it's a good idea to get it to one of your, uh, well, one the, of your guards. Well, the guard part was okay. It was the finish that was yeah. the problem. Boy, Edie was coming fast, but Knight, he, he never let Edie get a chance for that steal. We 
Hands connect on Murphy. Now Smith hands to Edie. Edie got bumped. Jake Ferguson bumped him and will get the foul. That's his first. I, I think getting Edie a little bit more involved is definitely going to be an advantage for Middleton. First team foul of the second half on the morning. And the Cardinals inbound. Here's C.J. Furman up at the top of the circle. Ashford three. Got it. Tough shot. First points of the night for Myron Ashford Jr. And that puts Middleton into a tie at 27. Connect almost fumbled it on the sideline, but didn't. Full court pressure bothering the Spartans now, and that's going to be 10 seconds. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, which is uh, very possible, I think that's the first turnover that Memorial's had against the press. They've uh, they've done a, a really outstanding job mm -hmm. of taking care of the ball. Almost got it across, but not quite. So we'll see if that doesn't become a factor. You know, maybe. Uh, you know, Connect and Wilson have had to handle that mostly. They might get a little tired here as time goes on. Ferguson jumps the screen and Murphy lost it. Here comes Ferguson for the jam. Edie to answer. Nope. Wilson rebounds for the Spartans. But I'll tell you, Ferguson did a great job of jumping out and Getting around the screen, and Murphy was kind of surprised by it, I think. Connect. Well, as we know, he, he's, an off, he's an awfully athletic kid. We're going to see we're going to see it here. And uh, well, he didn't have much to do on that one. They got him the ball, and uh, I think you might even have been uh, able to dunk that one. You think? You th I think so. I tell you, is he Jake Ferguson's shoes, by the way? Those are fancy little kicks. Yeah, they are. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what are those little flowers yeah. on there. Or what's, <laughs> I don't what's know what up? that is. But what's the deal? They're very colorful. Time out. Look at those. those Some sort of spotty. Are those basketballs? <laughs> Look at that. Boy, I got to ask them after the game, yeah. find out where he got those. I got to have a pair. Well, they're Nike. Yeah, those are snazzy. Oh, I have to have a pair of those. Yeah. Wear those babies to the beach. <laughs> Wear them over to the new pick and save. Yeah, oh, that'd be good. <laughs> You'd be the talk of the store. I'll yeah, tell no you. <laughs> 15 minutes left. 29 27. Memorial had a one point lead at half. 25 24. Ashford lost it. Ferguson saved it. Kevin Babry's going to make a couple of moves here at the next timeout. Knight got it inside. Offensive foul. Ashford took the charge. Nice, nice play by Ashford. He saw that coming and got ahead of the play and was in position. That's the third personal foul on Chris Knight. And that could have a huge impact on this game, Jay. I think they, they need to have him out on the court. So Madison Memorial leading at 29-27, but their leading scorer from last year, Chris Knight, out with three personal fouls. Smith lost it for a moment, but got it back. In the lane, tough wow. shot, he got it. Jack Smith with four, 29-29. That was a big time shot. Ferguson was there to challenge, but Smith threw it over the top and in. Okay, we got two things that are going on right now, Jay, that I think are going to have a big impact in this game. And the first is pretty obvious. It's Knight's foul situation. And the second is I think Wilson and Connect, as strong as they've played against this pressure, I think it might be starting to catch up with them a little bit. I think they might be getting a little tired. Ferguson tried the baseline move and just got a little tied up. Never got to the rim. Murphy driving, got it in a foul. What a play by Storm Murphy. Boy, you have to get back against him. Don't challenge him out there. Get back and get set. 
connect, should have should have tried to stay in front of him and trying to poke it instead of poking at the ball under those circumstances. Because you're not going to steal it from Murphy very often. So Storm Murphy up to 11 points. That's his first basket of the second half. I think they're going to get, yep, Carapresso. Matt Carapresso gets his first personal foul. That's the third team foul against Memorial in the second half. And Middleton, one of the few times tonight they've had the lead. There's the Memorial student section. Beach night, apparently. Yep. Yep. Having a good old time. <laughs> Looks like a whole bunch of people escaped from Clown College. <laughs> Just having fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, we should have had them fill us in on that, and we could have dressed like that. Heck, for, we could. For the, for the game. I think, we, I think we could run Clown College if we had yeah. the chance. <laughs> Graduate school at there you Clown go. College. <laughs> Middleton's been to the state boys basketball tournament five times the last one you remember that John 1998 oh boy yeah we remember there that are one. there are some that think there's John he coached I tell you what that state championship game in 98 when Vincent beat you what 38 36 yes Marshall Williams who went to North Carolina State for a while he was the guy that got you on a drive right down the right, right of free throw end, line yep. But, but what I'll remember about that is that was the greatest, your team showed probably the greatest sportsmanship I've ever seen in a state tournament, where it was the big, greatest battle you'd ever want to see. But your guys came and, you know, congratulated Vincent. I, I thought to this day, I still think that's one of the greatest well, things I've seen at a state tournament. It was a wonderful group of young men. They, uh, you know, they were, not only were they talented, they were just great kids. You know? The nice thing is we still see a lot of them even today around the, the community. I got my Ezekiel Elliott touchdown, by the way. Did you? Oh, yeah. congratulations. 7-3 Cowboys. 32-29. <laughs> this. It's Middleton in the lead. This is the first of perhaps many, but this is a, 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 a crucial point in the game for Memorial. Yep. They can't do too much more yep. traveling. That's not good. Yep, little shuffle by Brown before he put it to the floor. And again, this is happening with Chris Knight on the bench with three personal fouls. Although I like the idea that the uh, the sophomore Brown there wanted to attack. You know, he traveled, which isn't good, but he wasn't playing soft. He was going after it. Whistle, foul, going to go on Middleton. Okay, didn't see that one. 15, Allen Roden with the personal foul. Here comes the big fellow, six foot, six inch, Brett Whipley. <laughs> I asked him before the game, I said, are you really six six? He says, no, I just told him I was six six. <laughs> so that's what it'll be in the program the rest of the year. Uh, stay off the sideline. Wilson's in trouble, but found Harper. Now connect with a double pump yeah. that missed. Yeah, Wilson, Roden. Wilson got caught on the sideline. That, that, to me, that's showing he's a little exhausted. That was a mistake he didn't make in the first half. Edie got through the traffic, missed the layup, and knocked out a play by Joseph Harper. So Middleton gets it with a three-point lead and 12.38 left. I think Middleton right now definitely has the edge. They have a little momentum. Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're in charge here. Here's Whiffling to Murphy. Baseline, floater, tough shot. Rebound, tipped by Roden, back out, well done. And back into the hands of Murphy. Alan Roden's made a couple of nice hustle plays here. Murphy lost it. Pass was a little hot to handle, and Harper was there for a memorial. Spartans need to convert one of these trips. It's been 32-29 for a little bit. It was a nice pass. Wilson got it. Billy Wilson's first basket tonight, 32-31. What you're seeing hap happening here, too, Jay, is 
uh, didn't hurt him that possession, but Middleton is pushing, and I think it's the exhaustion factor. I think Middleton is pushing the <laughs> nope. Memorial's offense out further on the court. They're having to play up against the sideline. Whipley missed that wide open 12-footer. Ball loose on the floor, and it'll go back to the Cardinals. Here takes, comes. Always takes one to get on track. Yeah. Coach Alvarez always said is when you know it's like olives in a jar. Getting that first olive is hard to get out, and then once they start, they all fall out. The olive in the jar theory? The olive theory? in the jar theory, okay. yes. Okay, I have oh. to admit, I haven't seen yeah. her death before. Yeah, you know, you know, when you open a jar of olives and they're all packed in there, to get that first one out sometimes gets hard. So once you get one, then all the okay. tumblers open up. I'll take your word for oh, it. You try. You, you buy a I'll, jar I'll of olives. I'll get some on. olives on the way home tonight. Yeah. By the way, uh, unfortunate news, John Boyle, his car hit a deer last night. How'd that go for it? It was a big one, too. Ooh. That's no good. No, no. Final score, deer one, car nothing. Yeah. I got more deer this season than a lot of my <laughs> friends at Hunt did. You know how many guys didn't get their deer this year and you did? Knight almost converted, but he's fouled and he'll shoot two. Good possession by Memorial. Bring Knight back in the game. Go right to the rim with them. Put the pressure back on Middleton. C.J. Fermanick just picked up his third personal foul for Middleton. So Knight with three for Memorial. Now Fermanick with three for the Cardinals. Here's Knight to the free throw line. He has a real nice looking free throw. His, his jump shot doesn't look that good, but his free throw looks mm -hmm. really nice, really smooth. He'll get one more. He's three out of four tonight from the line, five points. And that one rolls in too, so six for Knight. 33 32 Memorial now back in front. So they escape that little sequence without Knight on the bench. Edie, who he almost stuttered that dribble a little bit. Ashford with a good move to get around some defenders and then hits the baseline jumper. Uh, if Edie, Edie had the opportunity to take a shot up right in Knight's face and uh, the result of that would have either been Knight's fourth foul or a, a fairly easy basket by Edie. You need to be aware of that stuff. Be tuned into what's going on in the game. Ashford's second hoop of the night puts Middleton back in front. Knight misses the jumper. Edie rebounds, gets it in the hands of Storm Murphy. See what Murphy tries to do here. Let's see if they attack Knight. Murphy gets around the corner, then lost it, but Edie's right there. He'll try a long one. Misses. Knight tips it in the air. Ferguson battles. Here comes Ian Brown. Three on one for Memorial. Tonight, he's hammered by Ben Jackson. Oh. A little contact there. Yeah, I'd say. So Jackson's going to get the foul. He prevented the basket, but Knight's going to go back to the free throw line. Well, that, that three on one, well, it turned into a three on two, I guess. It got a little congested, but. Yeah, they were bunched up in the middle. They should have been a little bit more spread out. Then it would have been a lot tougher for Middleton defensively. But Brown got it to Knight. The way they were lined up out there, one, the, one Middleton player could guard all three of them when they were that packed that tight. So Chris Knight. Now with seven points, he's made his last five free throws in a row. Make it six. Nice touch from the free throw line. You thought I'd jinx him with that, didn't yeah. you? Well, that doesn't have anything to do with the olive theory, does it? <laughs> no, it really doesn't. Oh, okay. Well, actually, it might. He missed his first one. That's like taking so, the first olive so out. So he of the, couldn't yeah. get the first olive out, and then once he got once the first one out. Once he got the first out, olive out. You go get a jar of olives. And you come talk to I'm, me the I'm, next time we got a game. I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah, okay. Davis Rocky, Jack Smith return for Middleton. They'll get Tyree Eady and Ben Jackson. There you see C.J. Fermanick, 32. He has three personal fouls. See the young man uh, on the Middleton bench. When I saw him, see a guy in, in white 
with the glasses on near the end of the bench. The, that's the uh, bow tie. Yeah, the guy with the bow tie. That's uh, Brogan Brunker. He was the the fourth leading scorer for Middleton last year, and he had a terrible illness. Didn't play football. There's a rebound by Kara Presso off the miss by Murphy. 35-34. We'll show you Brogan Brunker in a, in a bit, but... Uh, is he yeah. going to be able to play this year? Well, the, he did play Saturday. We're going to take a look at uh, Brogan the next time out. Here's a three from Connect. Hits the front of the rim. Carapresso follows. No. Knight nearly got his fourth foul, but knocked it out of bounds. There's Brogan Brunker. Yeah, last year, he averaged 7.8 points a game. Started a number of games. Couldn't play football. He's working his way back. He, he lost a lot of weight. And, and is really trying to get back in shape. And, and he was in tough straits for a while. It's great to see him back in the gym. And as I said, he did see some time up in Wisconsin. Dells in Middleton's first game on Saturday. So hopefully Brogan Brunker will return to action. Oh, and Knight blocks Jack Smith. Wow. That was a nice play by Murphy, a nice penetration and a pass, but it followed up by an mm. outstanding play. Now here's Knight, triple team, finds Brown, driving. Oh, he got another. Six for Ian Brown. That's a big-time sophomore play right there. Tell you what, Chris Knight looks like he wants to take things over a little bit too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. He's got to be careful, though. Uh, or not. Yeah. He snuffs out Edie. Yeah. Okay. I tell you what, we're going to look at this. Here, here's a guy playing with three fouls. He's got two blocks in the last couple of trips. That's a great play by Murphy. Smith thinks I got easy two, but nay nay. Uh, he was waiting for that one. He's got to be a little careful, though. You know, you yeah. get a couple of blocks and the, well. your, your blood gets flowing and you, you want to block every shot that goes up. And, you know, when you don't have any fouls, I guess that's mm. okay. But when you got three, you got to be careful. Yeah. I tell you, these two teams, <laughs> we're at the start of the Big 8 season. They got, they got some tough stretches here, both these teams. After tonight, Middleton, Saturday, they're home against Sun Prairie. That's parents' night at Middleton. Then next Tuesday, they're at Madison West. Next Friday, they're at Janesville Craig. Then uh, Thursday, the 15th, they're home against Verona. Saturday, December 17th, they're going to play the number one team in the state, Stevens Point in Kakona. Wow. And Madison Memorial after tonight, they've got a four-game road trip. Four in a row on the road at West, at Verona, at Madison La Follette, at Madison East. Jeez, what was the schedule maker <laughs> doing when he did that? Did he just wake yeah. up from a nap? <laughs> yeah, Steve That's, Collins uh, with his information. You don't see that very often. Four, four conference yeah. games yeah. away in a row. Although I guess that means that eventually yeah. you'll be playing them no. at home. No, no. The road trips are probably a combined, I don't know, 60 miles maybe. <laughs> Three in Madison and one well, in Verona. That, that. But hostile gymnasiums, that's for sure. Ashford traveled. Well, Memorial putting together a little run here. 37 34. And they'll get their ball back. It makes a difference when Knight's in the game. Yep. Connect against Edie. Now here's Brown who's come on off the bench with six big points for Memorial. Now he's caught up in the corner. Finds Billy Wilson. Uh, check the, yep, that's Billy Wilson. Six foot senior guard for Memorial. You know, I'm not sure, Jay, have Wilson and or Connect been out of this game this half? Uh, they've, they've taken very, very short, short breaks, that's for sure. Uh, they better be in shape then. Yeah. Neither one of them, uh, no, Wilson has two points, connect with none. And now Memorial gets it, or Middleton gets it back, rather. And but they, they'd still be in trouble without him. They've, uh, yeah. they've done well against this pressure. Now, Ferguson, I see, just came out of the locker room with the trainer. I wonder, if would, did he get hurt? He's grabbing the back of his left calf. Maybe cramps. Yeah, could be. But he's back on the bench. We'll see if he returns. Knight kicks back out. Now here's Wilson. Ben Jackson fronting Knight. 
Gets some help from Davis Rocky too. Here's Knight, look out to Brown. Floater, baseline, nope. Knight got the rebound. Tied up, tied up by Ben Jackson. Possession will keep it with Memorial. Storm Murphy returns for Middleton. Robert, uh, Joseph Harper back for Madison Memorial. Wilson to inbound. There's Knight working on Jackson. Oh, that's a beautiful fadeaway for Chris Knight, who has 10. That was a nice, nice shot, and I'd have to say that's probably at the extent of his range right now, mm. but it's still he has a nice looking shot from there. Murphy off the kick from the inside from Roden, it misses. Boy, Knight went up after that one. Nope. That was little, Harper. Little Couldn't too quite. lackadaisical. Yep. He should have took that up a little stronger. Couldn't quite get enough on it. I tell you what, it, Murphy has not had free reign on those hesitation crossover moves. Here's Furmanick has it stolen by Wilson. Wilson, a little awkward shot. And now that's going to be a two-shot foul out of all that mess for wow. Memorial. That looked like a... Uh, he learned that move from Murphy. <laughs> and Wilson somehow gets two free throws out of this. And that's the fourth personal foul on C.J. Furmanick. Boy, that's a big development for him. Yeah, and that's, Middleton. that's not good because I don't think he has a lot of points, but he's a real yep. solid defender for Middleton. He's ha ha having to play some of those yep. bigger guys for Memorial. Okay, now watch this. Wilson gets all messed up. Doesn't even hit the rim. Knight crap. Well, okay. So they say Furman had got him after uh, I'm not sure well, I on the it. shot. That's so obviously sure two shot foul. One. Six team fouls, by the way, on Middleton. Oh, 0 for two for Wilson. Memorial thought it'd be their ball, but it's going to be awarded to the Cardinals. Now the smile is not on the face at, the, at Mike Carr anymore, the is official. That, is that the well, ref he I, was talking to uh, before? Ron, see, he's smiling again. It's the softer, gentler that. Coach Collins. <laughs> Edie kicks back to Ashford for three. Yes! Memorial was, was in there, 1-3-1 one, one zone. I think that's the first time I caught it that half anyway. Ashford's second three of the night. And Middleton... Now trails by two. Ashford's up to eight points. Are they all this half? They had five at half. Five at half. Or no, excuse me, three at half. Three at half. 37, 39, 37 Memorial. I want to thank Memorial Athletic Director Jeremy Schlitz for getting us all set up here. We've got our camera up on the scaffolding and got a great location for our broadcast table. And no food, always, though. Well, you know, I'll buy you a hot dog later. Wilson fouled as he rebounded his own miss. Okay, he's, Wilson has been short on his shooting now, his free throws and... That I want, if he goes to the free throw line here, I want to see him uh, get the ball over the front of the rim because he's tired. Yep. Alan Roden gets the personal foul. Seventh team foul on um, on uh, Middleton. That's a good, I think that's a good timeout mm. by Coach Collins. I think his guards in particular need a little break. Our next Prep Mania game of the week on channel3000.com will be Tuesday, December 20th. Girls basketball, Verona, the defending Division I state champions at Middleton, which is ranked third in the state this season. That's Verona at Middleton girls basketball, Tuesday, December 20th. Did I show you the schedule? No, I haven't okay. seen the schedule. Coach Boyle will be back with us Friday, January 20th. We'll have Middleton at Sun Prairie, boys basketball. Tuesday, January, oh no, excuse me, uh, Friday, February 3rd, we're going to have Madison East back here at Memorial. That's okay, going to be a good yeah. one, too. Tuesday, February 7th, Stoughton at Wanakee Boys Basketball, and then we'll conclude our regular season schedule. Tuesday, February 14th, Monona Grove at Edgewood Boys That's Basketball. some good games lined up there. Some good matchups. Yep. Good matchup. We're also going to have a couple of uh, 
hockey games for you too. Edgewood at Verona. Friday, January 6th, that's boys hockey in Verona. And also, Edgewood at Middleton boys hockey. Thursday, January 26th. Season number 10 of the Prep Mania Game of the Week. Last year, Middleton was 19 and five, won a share of the Big Eight Conference title for the first time in 15 years. They started the season 14 and 0, but then dropped five of their last 10. They lost to Madison West in the regional final. Here's Billy Wilson making his free throw. He had missed his first two. Well, uh, I'm going to give Coach Collins credit for these free throws if he makes them both because that was uh, he was tired. That was a good timeout for him. Look at that. Okay. So uh, this is the largest lead we've had by anybody for a while, it seems. Rocky has hit two threes already. Got his own rebound there. Tries to dish it in the lane. There were three Spartans there, and Connect gets it out of trouble. Now, I'd like to see that what they do next time, but I I think Memorial was in a box and one on Murphy that time. Yeah. I think. Like the good old days, boxing one, right? Yeah, let's we'll have to take a look at it next time down the court. Knight was fouled by Jackson. Jackson pleading his case that Knight had the old chicken wing wrap around, but that's going to be Ben Jackson's third foul. So now the foul is starting to add up for a couple of Middleton players. Fermanick with four, Jackson now with three. And here's Knight to the free throw line where he has been dead solid. Let's not Since missing his first. Let's not try and block the shot of a guy that's five inches taller than you are. That's it. That's, well, uh, you'll probably hit him in the forearm yeah, most times, right? Eh? Yeah, I think he got him in the elbow. A rare miss for Knight at the free throw line. He is seven out of nine. Okay, we do. This is uh, this is a box and one. Yeah, we're getting down to it. 440 remaining second half. Ashford three. Yes, he did it again. Boy. Where has he come from? Ashford with 11. Jackson got another foul as he tried to reach in against Knight. Myron Ashford Jr. Oh, he knew it. He started backing up. Yeah, they're going to, you know, that, that box and one is never really like that defense. Even if it does cut cut out the uh, the guy you're playing man to man, you're going to allow some open looks at the basket. Knight drills that one. See well, if they stay with that defense next time down the court here. He's up to 12 points. Presso will put the miss back in. You know, that guy is always in the right place at the right time, it seems like. Rocky lost it on the way in. And he was fouled. Let's see if it's a shooting foul. Yep, it's going to be two shots coming up. I think Kara is going to get his second. And Davis Rocky to the free throw line. What this yep. What this defense is doing is it's it's opening up that lane. It's giving uh, Middleton some driving lanes here. Yeah. Davis Rocky's had a good night off the bench, seven points, and he's two for two from the line. So Rocky with eight. Here comes C.J. Fermanick in. He has four fouls, and Ben Jackson is the guy he gets, who also has four. Wilson inbounds. Kara Presso just lost it. Big turnover. It's 45-42. Well, are we to the point in the game where the press is finally going to start kicking in for Middleton? Fermanick. Short. Knight with a rebound. Not mm. a bad shot. Yeah, that's, that's one Fermanick makes an awful lot. In the night, unstoppable. 
That's a real advantage Memorial has. That oh, Middleton oh really doesn't have the kind of size to defend that very mm -hmm. well. It's like he said, show him, I'll show you the way, boys. Rockies three misses, loose ball, grabbed by Murphy. No looker to Fermanick. Oh, geez. Well, he got <laughs> bumped, I think. Uh, okay, wow. that was that was another mess, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I saw at least one forearm to the face in there. Oh, man. Here it is again. Look at that, look at him collapse. Oh, goodness. That's smart. I guess that's a call you got to get. Yeah. So Connect gets his second. Second yep. person. Uh, Memorial's back to right or straight up man to man. Six team fouls against the Spartans. So both teams now in the bonus. Middleton in the double bonus. Oh, Kara Presso just stole that pass. Is he having a night? And speaking of nights, oh, Chris Knight. Got his steps he mixed it. up. He, he rushed it a little bit. Oh, Murphy got it to Fermanick. No basket, offensive foul. Wow, that's a big play in this game. Yes, it was. See if, are we going to get another look at that one? Let's see here. And that's five personals on Fermanick. That's a tough call, oh, that's man. That's close. That's a tough call. That's six of one and a half dozen the other, I think. That one could have yep. gone either way. So Furmanick's done for the evening with two points. That's going to hurt Middleton defensively in particular, I think. So here. one of the big three will sit. Wilson gets it into Carapresso, and now Middleton will back off defensively. 47-42. Ashford stole it, stayed inbound. Here's Edie. Ashford's really coming up big. I mean, he's hitting his shot. Big defensive play there. That's only Edie's fifth point tonight. Foul. Memorial tried to rush it up against the press a little bit too much. They should have waited, saw what was developing, then attacked. That was a, he started attacking as soon as he got the ball. And, uh, well, that's a foul on Storm they got, Murphy. Uh, they got lucky on that one. So Murphy now with three. You know, I, I, I re recall talking about this a little bit last year, Jay, but now that these games are longer and it still takes five fouls to fall, fall out, <laughs> yeah. you're going to yeah. see more games oh. determined. Or a big influence on games because of the individuals falling out. Right. I don't think they, when they changed yeah. the rule, they quite uh, yeah. planned on that. But. Four eight minute quarters were 32 minutes, and now at the 218s, it's up to 36 for playing time in a game. Second one missed by Harper. And Edie controls the carom for Middleton. Yeah. Cardinals down four. Man to man by Memorial. Murphy to Edie. Wow, an athletic shot, and now Knight is gonna going to get his fourth foul. That's what you have to do. You attack. You, they're big mans in foul trouble. Go after them. Attack them. Watch. Even if you have, maybe have to take a bad shot, that's oh, exactly man. what you want to do. That's a poster there. Whew. Here's Edie. First one stays in. There might have been a Memorial fan or two that thought that Edie pushed off with his lead arm, but, uh, you know. Yeah. More than a few, old, I'll bet. That's yeah, the old olive theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stolen from Coach Alvarez, for gosh sakes. Edie with seven now. 48-46, and we will have a timeout. Woo, 227 left. Okay, Memorial has, if I read that right, Memorial has five time, or three timeouts left. Middleton, two. Oh and yeah, they used to have the little lights on the scoring table, but now they, yeah. have, now they have the and timeouts we're, we're left we're on the We're seated here, yeah. the scoreboards are behind the, the backboards for us. Yeah. 
Hey, some, a couple of notes from around the state. Jerry Pettigrew from Cuba City won his 900th game Monday night in his 50th year at coaching at Cuba City in Gratiot. And something's happening tonight that's never happened in the 100-year history of boys basketball in Wisconsin. You know what it is? Uh, there's a, no. There's a boys basketball game, Prentice against Lake Holcomb. The two boys basketball head coaches are women. Ball hit the bottom of the hoop, about backboard, but that's in play. Some fans want to think it's a turnover, but it's not. So Memorial still gets it. No, Amy Ring of Prentice and Joy Webster of Lake Holcomb. I think you just missed the double dribble. Our head coaches. Here's Knight. Nope. Yep. Middleton can tie with a two. He went away from the pressure. He should have gone straight up, go up strong. Don't let the pressure push away from the basket. Murphy pulls up, a little long. Battle for the rebound, it's tied up. Possession to Madison Memorial. Boy, that's a shot Murphy hits most of the time too, but just a little long. 157 left. Memorial's in the bonus. Well, didn't we just call that it was Memorial's ball? Well, the possession arrow was was incorrect. Yeah, it was. Now it's back to because it wasn't the correct. Us that was yeah, incorrect, no. Was it? no yeah. Smith, who nearly turned it over, but good save by Rocky. Now Murphy puts on the brakes. <laughs> Offensive foul, Middleton. Yeah, I didn't, I, Jack Smith has his palms to the sky saying, what did I do? I did not see what happened there. It's the second personal on Jack Smith. Make it the third, third on Smith. Okay, here we go. Watch here number go. five. Well, he got pushed in the back. Uh, yeah. And that, Are you that's what me? they call it. Yeah, I don't know oh, about that one. Okay. That's why Smith had issue. Well, I, I deservedly so. I... I yeah. think that was a bad call, pure and simple. Yeah. 48 46. 130 left. Ferguson with a couple of pirouettes. Fouled by Murphy. He'll go to the line. Now, I don't believe Ferguson is a real good free throw shooter. Again, we don't have stats mm -hmm. this time of the year to say one way or the other, I guess, but. Yeah. Well, he'll have an opportunity here. Yeah, that looked pretty good. They're all good when they go in. Okay. Ferguson's got eight points tonight. This to give Memorial a four point lead. Well, wow. I mean, that was far from smooth looking, but uh, <laughs> when they go in. Yeah. So it's a four point lead. Edie's three mm. goes way over it, the basket. Have a little more patience. Than oh, that. boy. And Ferguson time left. had an easy rebound there. Connect to Wilson. Here come the fouls, maybe. No, here comes Knight, and he is fouled. That's Rocky, who got a piece of Knight, and he'll go right back to the free throw line. Tell you what, Chris Knight has been the man here in the second half for Memorial. That was a uh, really smart play by uh, by Wilson there. He mm -hmm. got penetration. Middleton was reaching out out of position, trying to poke at the ball. Mm -hmm. He got between them and uh, dropped one off. Davis Rocky's first personal foul, and Chris Knight back to the free throw line when we return with. Exactly a minute left in our game. Yeah, for for the first of December, this has really been something tonight. Oh, this has been an unbelievable game for this time of the year. And I guess it's an, a, a tribute, you know, to the these kids are experienced kids. You know, it's I, I think the first games get a little wild when you ha have a lot of kids playing that haven't played much before. Although I will say this, one of the kids I've been most impressed with tonight has been the Brown kid from uh, the sophomore from Memorial. He's, mm -hmm. he's played like a senior. Yeah. Brown with six points. 
Matt Carapresso has been good with 10. Jake Ferguson has nine. Chris Knight with 13 for Memorial. I, I think Carapresso, in my, my way of thinking, is their unsung hero. He just, I don't notice him making mistakes. Now I'm sure he's no. made some. But uh, he just seems to be in the right place at the right yeah. time. And you know, on the flip side of that, Storm Murphy had nine at halftime. He only has 12 in the game. Only three in the second half for Storm Murphy. Here's Knight. Oh, it rolls in. He has had a ton of free throws on him. This is his 12th free throw attempt of the night. You see Billy Wilson saying, no fouls, no fouls. Well, that one missed. So he stays at 14 points in the night, and Middleton needs to make every possession count. Oh, my goodness, wow. Murphy with a hot pretzel. Well, he must have heard me saying he only had three in the second half. Whoop. No, right, there's time your out. Answer. no time out. What do we got here? Another look at Storm Murphy's spectacular left-handed reverse. Boy, oh, and Knight's playing with four fouls. You got to yeah, watch it. Yeah, he, you know, he he let him go by, then tried to block it. If anything, he should try and get in front of him and block mm -hmm. his path, as opposed to trying to get that uh, the sensational block. Memorial, the lead, for it. Memorial leads by three. Full court pressure from the Cardinals. They send a man deep, Knight, but he wasn't open. So now Wilson to Ferguson, yep. and he's fouled by Ashford. That pass mm. back here by Wilson to Ferguson up the sideline mm. was really a nice pass. He was yeah. in trouble. Yeah. And yeah. he kept his cool, as his want to do with a, a senior that the second year starting. Yeah made the perfect play so Ashford gets his third personal foul and boy how many memorial games have we done through the years the Spartans are put in a situation where they need to make their free throws sometimes they make them sometimes, sometimes they don't sometimes they don't <laughs> Ferguson will get one more Rocky back in for Middleton this is big they uh, need to make this to keep it a two possession game We're down to 46 seconds left in regulation. See if Memorial is going to come off of their men and double up on Murphy because you know what he's going to be up to. Big free throw by Ferguson. 52-48. Murphy got fouled on the drive. That was Knight, I think. Knight put his hands to his head like he was the guilty party, and he is. So... With 38.6 seconds left, Kevin Bavery sees Memorial's leading scorer from last year foul out. He leaves tonight with 14 points. So now it's on the shoulders of his Spartan teammates to hold on to this opening night game. Storm Murphy's at the free throw line. He'll shoot two. You know, I, again, we don't have the stats on this this early in the year, but uh, what Memorial wants to do here the rest of the way is keep the ball in the hands of their good free throw shooters. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure they want to have Ferguson with the ball under these circumstances. And I don't know about Brown being a sophomore. Oh, Murphy short on the first. Wow. One of the best free throw shooters around. That's an upset. Yep. He'll get one more. But the best he can do is get Middleton to within three. Real important player in this situation is the inbounder for Memorial. Okay, Murphy this, got that one. This is a real important pass. And Dif he made the right one. Connect fouled by Edie. So the senior Logan Connect will have two big free throws coming up. Man. 37 seconds. Left. That's going to be the longest 37 seconds these guys have played. Well, in at a least long we time. don't have to deal with what they do in the college and pro game now, where the officials go over to the table and uh, check the, uh, <laughs> the replay. The replay. Right, connect looked good on that one. 10 or 20 times at the end of games. That That's, drives me crazy. Oh, no, no kidding. That's Connect's first point tonight. What a big one. You know, for a kid that's really contributed to this game, I mean, I, you know, I, I think his senior leadership has been very helpful for Memorial. 
Short on that one. It stays a four-point lead for Memorial. Here's Murphy. Edie works the lane. Nice Hands pass. Hands off to Smith who lays it in. Beautiful pass. Edie to Smith and Middleton's within two. Timeout. You know, I, I'll take the blame for this. I've been sitting over here. I was waiting to see Murphy in, in his, you know, 17 dribbles and, and, <laughs> and take a shot, but he made a real nice pass yeah. and, uh, you know, gave the ball up, played good team basketball there, and that was the result. You know, I, it's, uh, give him credit. I like that. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he continues well, to do that. If, if that team shares the ball like that, they're, they're as good as anybody. They're tough to deal with. Yeah, they're as good as anybody. Because they're not predictable. You know, if you know yeah. who's going to shoot, that you're a lot easier to defend than if you have to worry about everybody that's out there. Which is the way they played at that last possession. I yeah. give Murphy credit yeah. for that one. That was a. There's the young Spartans. <laughs> Making their own music. Well, the oh, band yeah. isn't here. Bruce the Spartan comes over to our announce table, says hello. There's he Bruce. He didn't have any food for us either. <laughs> oh, that! look at that. See, there, there we are. There's a cool sweater right up here. Look at that. That's a Christmas. Oh, what does that say? Crustmas. Crustmas. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Memorial to inbound. See if uh, Middleton's going to foul right away. Look out. Here's Ferguson. Two dribbles. Nearly stolen and yeah. connect is hit from behind by Ashford. Boy, that almost yeah. worked out for the Cardinals, but not quite. Yeah. Fourth on Ashford. If they're fouling that quickly, they had the opportunity to foul Ferguson, and that might have been the might have been the smarter thing to do there. So connect to the free throw line. He was one out of two his first trip there. 23.4 on the clock. Yeah, and that one rolls through for Logan Connect. And this is a big one here. Mm, sure is. Make it a two possession game. Trying to turn a three point lead into four. One more free throw for Logan Connect. Although the way this is going, there's pro probably liable to be about eight or nine possessions yet. Oops. Missed it. 54 51. Murphy. Down to 13 seconds. Edie driving, scoring. Timeout, Middleton. Now, the scoreboard says they don't have any timeouts left. Well, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I think the scoreboard just was off because the Middleton coaches were not happy that the scoreboard said zero. But there's Edie's basket to make it a one-point game. Boy, that was a nice, strong drive. And you know what? I don't mind that they went for the two and not the three. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could force a three. But now you're right there. You've got. Um, well, you're still going to be able to get another you, shot at it. You're you can put your press on. And you're, yeah. you're going to get the ball back. And right. It's been a dandy. Yeah, middle or, uh, Memorial head on that last basket by Edie. Beautiful uh, drive by Edie. But uh, they let up a little bit. They did not get good help defense on that one. They gave him a, a, a path that he shouldn't have had all the way to the basket. Yep. But he took advantage of it. And there's the Middleton huddle. Now, what we want to see a Memorial do here is want to make sure you get a good inbound pass to a free throw shooter, mm -hmm. your, your better shooter, and uh, you know make sure you do that. And Middleton, on the other hand, they're going to be trying to deny the ball from the uh, from the Memorial's best free throw shooter. I'm thinking they almost want the ball to go. Inbound to Wilson. Here comes the okay. defense. And boy, Edie was looking for a tie up, but they're going to get Edie for the foul. You know, you see that happen a lot, Jay, where the ball comes in and the, the player that catches the ball just holds on to it and expects 
expects to get fouled, yeah. well, that makes it easier to tie them up if they're going to, you know, do oh, that, uh, hold on to it like that. And uh, we almost had an example of that right there. Two shots for Billy Wilson. How big is that? Memorial got the ball into the right guy. This one would force Middleton to make a three to send it to overtime. Yep. Yeah, there's no going for two and then playing it from there under these circumstances. There's not enough time for that. Wow, Billy Wilson nails both free throws. Now, wow. here we come to the old deal about uh, do you foul here? Oh, Does yeah. Does Memorial foul and make uh, Middleton shoot two Where do you stand throws? on that? I, my, my opinion on that is you just play the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't. I don't like to look for the fall. There, Jay, there are too many things that can happen. There are too many just bizarre things that can take place. Mm -hmm. Play it straight up. Play good, solid defense. You know, maybe if you do anything, maybe maybe trap, double team a shooter. Maybe mm -hmm. you do that. Maybe Memorial's going to bring somebody over to uh, double yeah. team Murphy and uh, go from there. I don't like the... Some coaches do. I mean, it, it's, you know, six of one and a half dozen the other, but yep. too many weird things can happen with young high school men. Yeah. Isn't that true? Boy, this gymnasium has seen some great battles through the years between Middleton and Madison Memorial. Tonight is no exception. Middleton needs three to send it to overtime. They get it in the hands of Murphy with five, with four, to tie. Oh, it just rimmed out. Ashford will miss, and that will end the game. Oh, Storm Murphy wow. came so close to hitting three, but Memorial wins it 56 What a game. What a game. Unbelievable. Well, just, yeah, just the way Murphy was able to create the shot was one thing. I mean, look at that. That's a deep three. Connect was all over him, and it got halfway down and came out. See, I, I, under, under those circumstances, if your man is under the basket in the lane and you know they have to have a three, well, oh boy, you fly out and you double team that, that shooter. You don't leave him out there all by himself. Think this Big Eight Conference is going to be fun this year? Oh, or this what? is going to be something. That that was a great game. That was a great game, no question. Well, but I said about uh, March and December, maybe it was. Boy, you're not going to find <laughs> yeah. you're not going to find a game that's a lot better well, in March than this one if, was. If this is December, I can't wait till March, yeah. when even the stakes are higher. All right, Mr. Boyle, we'll see you next year on the Game of the Week, and okay. uh, happy holidays, and thanks for coming out again for well, a tenth year. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, that mm. was a fun one, Jay. Yep, we'll do it again soon. Madison Memorial had a one-point lead at halftime, and they end up winning it by three. 56-53 on opening night in the Big 8 Conference. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight on Channel3000.com, and a reminder that our next Prep Mania Game of the Week Tuesday, December 20th, Bill Brophy and I will be in Middleton for Verona and Middleton girls basketball, 7.30 p.m. on channel3000.com. For our entire crew, they did a wonderful job again tonight bringing you these great pictures from Memorial High School. For John Boyle, Jay Wilson. Final score once again, Madison Memorial 56, Middleton 53. Good night from Memorial High School.